This week, Nickelodeon child stars have been a huge conversation following the release of the Investigation Discovery docuseries called Quiet on Set. The series sat down with several child stars, parents of child stars, and former Nickelodeon employees as they recalled experiences they had and things they witnessed during their time at the network. As a result of the series coming out, people have looked towards child stars not in it, wondering if they had anything to say about some of the things brought to light, especially after former Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider put out a video a addressing the series, seemingly defending his name, but also admitting to some inappropriate behaviors and apologizing. Not many have had things to say, which I don't think should be seen as a negative, as we are talking about some extremely sensitive subjects here, and we never know what their experiences could have been on set or in life in general. That could make talking about things like this extremely difficult, so the fact that people have been urging former child stars to speak out on everything seems inappropriate. But one person who has been heavily harassed by the public this week has been Josh Peck. Josh was featured in Drake and Josh as well as The Amanda Show during his time at Nickelodeon, and since he worked alongside Drake Bell for so long, people had questions about what he thought of the Quiet On Set series. Since Drake Bell revealed in it that he was the unnamed victim in the 2004 conviction of Brian Peck, who was his dialogue coach that he met during the second season of The Amanda Show. And just to clarify, he has no association to Josh Peck. Drake had not publicly talked about this until now and has shocked a lot of people by revealing this information. People had later commented on Josh's social media accounts wondering if he knew about this. He had also posted a TikTok earlier this week that people interpreted as shady towards Drake and the series. If I haven't talked to you since 2023, take that as a sign that you don't exist to me anymore. Damn, you fucked up. You got sprayed with the rage. Bye. See you in that bar. Although it wasn't confirmed that this was shading Drake in any way or the series, people accused him of being shady anyway, just because it's publicly known him and Drake aren't friends. In 2022, Josh confirmed this on the BFFs podcast. Yeah. Are you guys like not friends? <laughs> not really. No. What there was like, Drake there Bell was went like a down a bad path. It was a, yeah. There was a long story with Drake. I feel like what you didn't invite him to your wedding, right? That's what happened. I didn't invite him to my wedding and the internet went crazy. And there's been a lot of drama between these two in the past with Drake publicly stating that he was hurt to not have been invited to Josh's wedding and the two later did reconnect but drama started up once again as Josh told the story of how they reconnected and Drake's wife came out to say that things played out much differently than he had described. So things just always haven't been the best with these two, hence why people assumed even more that he was shading Drake. People also wanted to know Josh's stance on Dan Schneider following the series because prior to its release, it seemed he was on good terms with him. It was said that he invited Dan to his wedding and it sounded like he might have defended Dan against Jeanette McCurdy in an unreleased episode of his podcast where he had her on. He admitted at one point that she did not let him release the episode that they shot together. I thought it was an amazing book. So did we, despite what Jeanette says. What did, <laughs> oh, does she think? She, she, she was our first ever guest. Really? Like the day that she released her book. Mm -hmm. Like she was becoming it. She came on, it was an amazing get for us. We were truly good guys. Unbelievable interview. Spoke about everything that she wanted to, nothing that she didn't want to. Mm. It ended and she told us not to run it. Read Jeanette's That's book. Yeah, I read Jeanette's book. I don't know where. Oh, and it, obviously the Dan Schneider or alleged Dan Schneider yes. chapters were um, so crazy. And it, it just put me and all the Jamie Lynn Spears conspiracies and stuff like that. I just I don't want to grill you on this. I don't want to I don't want to ask you <laughs> we'll anything. We'll do it that on your pod. You. <laughs> no, you can. Um, what were your interactions with him like, if I can ask? I, I am being a hundred percent honest. He just was a tough boss. Yeah. But, and I was a kid. Which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. With it, obviously, I'm sure you've unpacked that in therapy, you know, the feelings of. That's right. Having a fucking boss when you're a kid. But see, I like what you just said, because we actually spoke about it a little during the Jeanette podcast that never aired and will never see the light of day. <laughs> but at least from my understanding, like Josh's experience as a child actor was far different from what is portrayed by others. I, like Josh, I I don't think that you would agree that you hated it. Like, I think you, I think you loved it, right? Like, I think, I know that there were tough things, of course, but... Yeah, I think both things can be true, right? There was a yeah. duality to it. Though Drake did not seem to have a problem with Dan in the series, he didn't say anything negative about him and even admitted that Dan called him after Brian's arrest and 
He confided in Dan that it was him that was the unnamed victim in the case. So it honestly wouldn't surprise me if Josh would still also say somewhat positive things about Dan, even though there's been so many things said about him and the things that he's done, the way that he's made people feel. And I mean, he was let go from Nickelodeon for a reason. But since Drake doesn't seem to have bad things to say about him, I don't think that Josh will suddenly switch up his stance. Drake ended up coming out and posting on TikTok, defending Josh's name, saying that Josh did reach out to him privately and he does not want Josh to be getting any hate right now. Hey, what's up, guys? I just want to uh, clear something up. Um, I've noticed a lot of uh, comments on on some of Josh's TikToks and some of his posts, and I just want to let you guys know that um, this is really, uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time, and um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, so not everything is put out to the public, um, but I just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and um, it's it's been very uh, sensitive, um, but he has reached out to uh, uh, to talk with me and, and help me work through this and, and uh, has been really, really great. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh, take it a little easy on him. The following day, Josh ended up releasing a statement of his own in regards to the series. He turned comments off on his post, which wasn't surprising as it's been said that he was deleting comments on his previous posts all week and blocking people who were asking him to address everything, which didn't help the situation. But in his statement, he said, I finished the quiet on set documentary and took a few days to process it. I reached out to Drake privately, but want to give my support for the survivors who were brave enough to share their stories of emotional and physical abuse on Nickelodeon sets with the world. Children should be protected. Relive Living this publicly is incredibly difficult, but I hope it can bring healing for the victims and their families as well as necessary change to our industry. Following this statement, people have still commented questions they have for Josh, but I don't think that he will be speaking out much further than this unless he decides to talk about this on his podcast, but I would be surprised if he did. Josh hasn't been the only one to speak out about things, though. Drake and Josh's TV mom has come out with a statement about the series as well, writing, They weren't my real kids, but I'll always love them. It broke my heart into a million pieces to hear just how much Drake was holding inside while we were working together. I was both devastated and proud seeing the man he's grown into sitting down on camera bravely telling his story. Past abuse doesn't define us and it has no right to rule our lives. I know that putting this burden down will free him in so many ways. I hope memories of the joy he had on our shows will someday greatly overshadow the pain, sending love to Drake for a deep healing and for a rich and beautiful life ahead. Devin Werkheiser from Neds Declassified also came out with a statement after he got a lot of backlash along with his two other former Neds Declassified co-stars that he currently does a podcast with, Lindsay Shaw and Daniel Curtis Lee, as they were seemingly joking about the quiet on set series on live the other day. Coming. Daniel, I told you. <laughs> Daniel, we told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel, and give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really shouldn't. This is awful. are we doing this? Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's awful. The, the, the Drake Bell is a, cr like, that's crazy to hear. I, I, that is and that never came out, which is really wild. Devin tweeted out an apology saying, sorry to Drake, gutted I hurt you. I was being an idiot today. No way around it. I feel horrible that my dumb ass was even speaking about this without seeing it. I watched Quiet on set tonight and am horrified by the gravity of what Drake and others share. Truly heartbroken about what my fellow actors went through. I can't believe they weren't protected. I'm sorry for compounding any hurt. This whole series has just started up so many conversations online with those urging the network and other children's programming to ensure children's safety on set. And people have also just been left in horror at the fact that a lot of people are just walking around free right now despite crimes committed. Some have served time, but not nearly as much time as people believe should have been. And the fact that some of them are even able to get work afterwards, especially on other kids' shows, it's just disgusting. But that is what has been said this week since the docuseries has been released. If any further statements are made or any other updates come out, I will let you guys know. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.